I know I usually do Game Boy stuff, but I've got a uh, Xbox One controller that I uh, I need to do a little bit of work on. I figure, you know, might as well film it, throw it up on my channel. And, uh, you know, if someone gets some use out of it, then here we go. So, a long time ago when I bought my Xbox One, um, which is a story for another video, I bought an extra controller. I bought one of these. Uh, my Xbox One, because I bought the uh, Halo 5 one, came with this controller and I didn't really want to wear this thing down. Um, I have used it a little bit, not too much, but it's still basically how it came. Uh, this is the controller I normally used. Um, I bought this one really cheap on eBay when these things were brand... Well, not these ones, because this is the first gen um, and this is a second gen controller with the headphone jack. This one doesn't have the headphone jack. So that's partially why this one was so cheap. But anyway, I bought it as is four parts because um, it was broken. Um, now, when I got it, I noticed exactly zero issues with it. And I have been using it for the better part of five years without noticing any issues with it. Uh, now, I'm fairly confident this is an aftermarket shell. Uh, at the very least, the red parts are aftermarket because it should say Xbox there, and it definitely doesn't. But otherwise, it, it feels mostly fine. Now, very recently, I started playing a game that requires um, L3 and R3, and I finally figured out what the actual issue with this controller is. Um, it works fine normally, the joystick does work fine normally, but if you try and click it while it's at one of the angles, you hear it, it uh, it's not very happy. So the joystick itself is broken, but I mean, it still works perfectly fine. If, if I didn't literally already have the parts, and if I wasn't already taking this thing apart, I wouldn't bother fixing it. But you know, when in Rome, I guess. Uh, so what's going on? I want to reshell this. I bought a shell for it a very long time ago and completely forgot I bought it. Never ended up reshelling it. And, uh, well, clear's hot, so let's, let's do that. Now, I'm kind of concerned because, oh wait, no, I did buy the right controller shell. I, uh, because there's, there's at least three different hardware variants of these controllers, and I I bought it so long ago, I don't remember. But I also ended up buying some other controller parts, and I kind of want to... I kind of want to mix and match, you know, use the uh, limited edition shell with the clear shell. I think that would be pretty cool to mix and match them, so... That's, that's, that's what I'm going to do. Um, full disclosure, I have never taken one of these apart before. I do know that these grips come off, or are supposed to come off, because I've accidentally... I've dropped it and one of these fell off before. But beyond that, I have no idea. I'm also fairly certain this sticker needs to come off, because it looks like someone's already peeled it off before anyway. So it'll be a learning experience for the both of us. can't imagine that. Yeah, okay. Probably don't need to remove it any more than that. Alright, I'm gonna use my fancy handy dandy iFixit kit. Because it comes with security torques. I just don't know what size. I'm really bad at eyeballing them. Is it? Now, when I used to do Xbox 360 controllers, I would just stick a flathead in there, and either you get the screw out or you break the pin off, and you can use a regular Torx. Both work. Um, yeah, you can see that's what I did on my Xbox 360 controllers. You can see there used to be a pin there, but there is not a pin anymore. 
Um, there is also not a screw in that hole. I have come a long way since modding. Since initially modding, starting modding. I don't know. You know what I'm trying to say. I'm tired. I shouldn't be starting this so late, but here we are. I wanted to start modding Xbox One controllers just because compared to the Xbox 360 controller, I think this is the better controller. Literally the only reason I haven't is because Xbox 360 controllers still work perfectly and because I don't have, I can't use this with my computer wirelessly. I don't have the Bluetooth controller and I don't have the wireless adapter. But my Xbox 360 controllers still work perfectly fine wirelessly, so. That's what I've been using. One, two, three, four, five. Oh. All right. I'm fairly certain the faceplate comes off now. Yep. And let's see what's going on with this joystick. Actually, it looks fine. Mechanically, I don't see any issues with it. I mean, obviously, it shouldn't be sticking like that. But generally, you don't have to push them to that full extreme. I mean, there is some physical wear on it. Um, We'll replace it anyway because that's what I set out to do. But I've uh, I've been using the exact same Xbox 360 controller for quite a few years. I most recently modified it to have USB Type C charging and a uh, rechargeable battery. Um, but before that, I modified it to look like that cool lunar Xbox One controller. I just thought that design was pretty hot. But now I suppose I could just replace it with an Xbox One controller. Ah, okay. That just comes right off. And I suppose if we're just replacing that joystick, we don't really need to strip this down any further. Uh, but I am going to reshell it too, so I might as well. Need a smaller Torx. Not that small. Of course. No, that was right. That screw just appears to be a little bit stripped. Because apparently I'm not the first person in here. No, I already figured that out. I think this is supposed to come off first. It always freaked me out. Like, I've never taken one of these apart, but I have seen the insides. I mean, I'm not totally, totally naive on this. Um, I can honestly say I haven't watched any videos of someone trying to repair one of these or anything like that. But it always... Uh, I have known that these are two separate PCBs in here, and that's that's just always, like, that's, that's never made sense to me. Like, why did Microsoft do that? I mean, obviously, because they did that because it was the cheapest way to do what they wanted to do, but I don't know, it just, it, it doesn't, like, that's such an added step of manufacturing such a big added cost. I don't think these come out without being desoldered. It's kind of frustrating. I'm 
unless these do come out without being desoldered and I'm just missing something. But I really don't think there's a way to fit this through that hole. And I have no idea what these are. I'm guessing these are the shoulder buttons. This gray wire. And if that's the case, the order of these wires does not matter. So hopefully that is the case. I obviously need more heat because this is lead-free solder and that is a ground plane. just leave the other one but I think yeah my new shell has a new subframe assembly so we'll just desolder everything and luckily these are labeled I don't think it matters but in the off chance it does these up with some nice delicious leaded solder. Right. Uh, we'll come back to this. Let's do the stick first. Oh that could be the problem. I didn't notice that. The, uh, the whole thing is crooked. Oh wait, is it just, oh, it's missing a part. That's what it is. Okay, so there's this little gray thing on this left stick. It's missing on the right stick and it's missing on the left stick. Um, parts. So how, oh, they're right in front of me. You can get these super cheap on usual places, AliExpress, eBay, etc. Um, you can get unbranded ones or you can get the uh, Alps branded ones. I don't think it really makes that big of a difference because I think they're from the same factory regardless. Um, but the Alps ones aren't that much more expensive and they usually work a little bit better in my experience. I've done enough sticks in this controller to know that when you get a good stick, it lasts a lot longer. Anyway, I'm sure there's a way to just transfer over that gray piece, but I don't know how. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to do what I usually do and just swap out the whole darn part. So I don't know what the official way to do this is, but I, I'm just going to use my solder sucker. But I also want this board to not go anywhere. I need a better, I need like an actual PCB vise or something seen a few that I'm looking at that look pretty nice so right this second I'm just tinning up all the solder joints with some nice delicious leaded solder 
that is much easier to clean up than the lead-free stuff that manufacturers have to use. It's also lower temperature, so it's a little bit easier to work with. Functionally, it's not exactly the same. Um, I don't know the specific mechanical differences or if there are any like electrical characteristics. I do know that it's just harder to work work with. So for most hobbyists, it's not recommended unless you have to. I do know that the flux is also different. And you generally can't mix and match, which is why I'm flooding so much solder on here. You can see my joints look pretty crusty. That's the uh, lead-free stuff. Oh, I totally melted that pad. Whoops. Oh well. All right, here's the fun part. And it's only fun because I just got a new tool. So you can use these cheapo garbage solder suckers. Uh, they're like $2 on eBay and AliExpress. Um, there are also some slightly fancier ones that in this particular case came with my hot air station. These work okay. Um, or you could spend $800 on a Hakko FX880, so I don't know, whatever. Stupid expensive desoldering station. Or spend 25 to 30 bucks on one of these bad boys, and it's so worth it compared to the cheap AliExpress junk. Trust me. You gotta actually depress the plunger for it to work, though. So I need a uh, thing to put under this. just clears these joints right up. What's nice about it in particular is this little silicone tip. It just uh, it just it just gets right in there. It makes a good seal. And it sucks. It sucks so good. Oh. Only problem is stuff like that happens often. You get a big old solder ball stuck in there. But you can always just do that. You can burn the tip on this thing, but you won't melt it. I don't know what I did with it, but it did come with a bunch of extra tubing as well. So when you wear this out, you can replace it. All that to say, yes, I know these things are expensive, but it's totally worth it. It's an Engineer SSO2.
it sucks so tremendously. It's not going to beat a dedicated desoldering iron. But unless you have at least a couple hundred bucks to drop on one of those, the good ones, allegedly, are like 800 I know that Hako is expensive. I don't know if there's any good uh, alternatives. Anyway, I think that's it. If all went well. Oh, God, I, I was holding it like this going, did I just desolder the wrong one? Nope. Something is still stuck. Maybe we can wiggle it though, because it seems like it's just one pin. Yep. There's that. Now, I've heard people say you want to save the potentiometers on this thing and reuse them with your new stick box. I have literally never had a problem using the new potentiometers. It's not sitting flat though. What's going on here? Maybe I just need to solder one corner, apply pressure, and then solder the other corner. Let's try that. It's the worst that could possibly happen. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. I'm not liking it though. Oof. Forgot to clean my iron. So, I feel better knowing that there was an actual physical, mechanical issue with my um, joystick. 
I'm not sure how that happens, except from um, like a factory fuck up or something that someone did when they had it open. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure, even though mine are Alps branded, they're uh, counterfeit or something. Because that stick is crooked and the stamps don't match. That's kind of frustrating. Well, hopefully I don't have to take this apart and do that again. I probably will, but carry on in the meantime. Is this like a half size in between? What the fuck? Alright, I have no idea how this comes apart now. Oh, probably, um, Helps if you take out all the screws. Just a guess. that's a contractor Microsoft used to build this. Oh, these gray things are the uh, impulse triggers or precision tr or whatever the fuck they're called. The little vibrating motors in the triggers. Alright, I can't figure that out. It's way too complicated for my mind to process. Apparently. Looks like it should just lift off. No? Maybe these have to come off first. For those who have actually done this before, sorry if I'm making you cringe, but we all start somewhere, and for most people, that's a YouTube video. <laughs> um, I think I. I think there was a misunderstanding on my part, though. You know, you're not supposed to make a YouTube video, you're supposed to watch a YouTube video. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. say these triggers look like um, so much easier to manage compared to Xbox 360 ones. Oh yeah, this comes off from this side. No, still not. The 
the slip. Ah, oh, it has to go around the button. That makes sense. Now we can remove this board. Ooh, and we could do an LED swap. LED. Well, the controller still works. So that's good, I guess. I'm not really sure what I'd swap it out with. Blue? God, that is such a weird membrane. Fuck it, let's do blue. That's, uh, it's actually going to be kind of a pain in the butt to desolder. Let's double check first. If I can even replace that. That'll be fine. What say you, Blue? I don't really know how to desolder this because I usually just go at both pads at once. Can't really do that with this. Not without destroying it. Oh, there we go. Might have destroyed it anyway. Yeah, probably destroyed it. Okay. Nice. No going back. I already forgot, but I'm pretty sure that side with the dot is the groomed. So, pink. Oh, you do red. But I'm doing this shell. I think blue would go good with the accent. You know, it never actually occurred to me that this could be a um, a bootleg, like a fake controller. I really don't think it is. The PCBs look like all the other ones I've seen. But I don't actually see any Microsoft branding on these. The only thing here is on the wireless controller. It says Xbox, but that doesn't look that doesn't look like any logo I've ever seen. And both these PCBs say Techbotic, and that doesn't, it seems weird to me. This sticker looks like a Microsoft sticker. So if anyone actually knows more about these, I would love to get some input on that. I don't really want to take apart my other controller some way. Based on that logo, that RU in some way, I'm thinking it's probably legit. Oh, and that code, yeah, it's probably fine. That is definitely a Microsoft code. Well, I suppose it could be faked. Regardless, pretty sure it's legit. Uh, what was I doing? LED.
Ne? Okay. This is actually the wrong size LED. But it should still work. Where'd my battery go? There it is. Oh no! I can't tell if the controller's on because the Xbox is already on. Oh, there it goes. I just wasn't pressing the button. Nice. It's a bit on the dim side. But, oh well. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to get brighter LEDs. Alright, so I definitely had an ulterior motive. I wanted to see if this, if it would be feasible to swap in a, um... Oh, is that what I think it is? What does the Xbox controller use infrared for? Because this is solid opaque. There's no, uh... My phone on. Of course not, that would make it easy. Nope, phone's not on. But this is infrared, transparent. It's hard to see there. This thing has infrared LEDs. Sorry, totally distracted. Um, that is a nice USB port. It's definitely possible there is more than enough room. I think I might make a USB-C mod for this. Not now, but at some point. All right. So I'm just going to use the original buttons because fuck that noise. I'm sure the new buttons are buttons. These are also buttons. All right. Before I get further, I need to figure out how to swap this and this. Those look crimped. That's cool. Does that push? I take back everything I said about these uh, bumpers looking easier to manage. Oh, you know what? No, I'm not going to swap this. I'm not going to use this. That's silly because I'm not using the clear faceplate. So you're not going to see this anyway, and I don't want to break that, because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Oh, 
That way I don't have to worry about taking this thing apart. I can swap out the other parts though. come apart I could use the clear shells on my triggers might do that now is very clearly the time if I want to I'm going to use the black button goes in there. Why is mine cut down? This seems like a right pain in the see you next Tuesday. Oh, because that's supposed to go in there. See? I'm learning. Don't worry. Nice. Before I go any further though, clear jewel or regular Xbox jewel? This looks better, but with my LED, no, fuck it, that looks better. That was an easy decision. <laughs> Bumpers are hard to get right, so I'm not even gonna. S I'm not even gonna try messing with the clear ones. At least they are on Xbox 360 controllers. I don't know if they've gotten any better at making them for Xbox One controllers. I assume not, because why would that change? Oh, I should screw this down so my buttons stop falling out of position.
I don't know, maybe the uh, separate, the dual PCB design makes these easier to, or cheaper to repair, should the, uh, should they require it. Though I imagine, uh oh. getting stuck. I don't know what it's getting stuck on. It's literally the same parts. It's not even touching that clear part. Something feels off. Annoyingly enough, that works better. Let's try the original one more time. Okay, well, chalk it up to ghosts. Because that makes just as much sense as any.
to take that out. Come on. There we go. The button was stuck. Ooh, that makes way more sense. Okay. I had it clamped under the screw. Okay. Okay. We're in the uh, we're in the home run here. We're in the final stretch. Now I just need to decide on sticks. Do I want to use these clear ones? Because those will oh wait, I don't need to decide that yet. I can I can reinstall this first. I forgot about that. I'm gonna go with the clear ones. Fuck it. They're not difficult to swap out. Hello? There we go. Oh, I'm still worried about that being crooked. It looks crooked. <laughs> and worried about this shoulder button that is now sticking once again. screws without taking it apart again. I don't know. I'll have to fuck with it some more. Let's... Oh, my soldering iron went to sleep. Get him in. There we go. These are just vibration motors. If I get these wires backwards, the only real downside is that I believe the uh, motor will spin backwards, which, since the only purpose of the motor is to spin in any direction, an unbalanced weight, I really don't think it matters. But PCB is labeled. There's a little minus and a little plus, and the black one is the ground, so that's usually the minus. And I think we can tuck these wires in, even. No, not really. Okay. Well, they'll go right here. I'll just bend them. Fuck it. Fuck it. Okay. 
I don't remember which was on which side. I'm pretty sure that also doesn't matter. But, um... Well, because I know for... I mean, I know it's still going to work fine either way. My concern is that, you know, some games, you know, a little bit of rumble. They just want to do the the little motor. But a lot of rumble, they want to do the big motor. And an extra lot of rumble, they want to do both motors. That is a gross, crusty joint. So is that. What the fuck? Right, 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 right. Let's finish putting this bad boy together. Um, the back goes on first. Pretty sure it just goes in there. Come on. That is not a good sign. Oh, I'm missing something. Doesn't matter too much because I use a rechargeable battery pack. Off chance I don't want to use the rechargeable battery pack. I'm thinking maybe I should transfer these over. project might be bust because this thing does not fit. Too bad. 
I think once it all gets screwed together, all the most of the creaks will work themselves out. This clear shell is not very high quality. I'll say that much. This replacement faceplate isn't isn't so hot either, but it's not nearly as bad. I think Oh yeah, that feels a lot better. Uh, and now I just need these. Which don't quite want to snap on. So that's cool. There's this super annoying gap because they don't want to click. Nope, that's just the clear shell. That's excellent. At least those both feel good now. And look at that. No super loud click now. All right, so I don't know what I'm gonna do about this. It feels like shit. The included ones seem to fit fine. That's frustrating. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. This is why you check your orders when you get them. I bought this shell at least a year ago. There is no way I can get my money back at this point. <laughs> no like protrusions in any parts no, the clips look broken it should just work I'm fairly confident that this faceplate and these uh, grips are OEM looking at them I mean, on this one, there's there's no molding or anything, no model numbers. On my red parts, which are higher quality aftermarket, but still aftermarket nonetheless, there are some mold numbers, but they're different. Like on the OEM battery cover I have here, it says Xbox, and there's no... Nothing on the inside. This one has like um, a date or a, a mold indication mark, polycarbonate ABS, a recycle mark. This has nothing. This on the other hand, look at the inside, the mold. It's, I mean, these could have come from the same mold, except that the model number is in a completely different spot, completely different font and everything, and it's just so crisp and clean. Oh, 
Oh, it feels, it feels on now. There's still an annoying gap on that side. Maybe we just need to apply unreasonable force. Clicked. That clicked. Maybe that's it. Oh yeah, that feels a lot better. Well, there we go. Um, obviously, I need to go test it now. But... Hang on, I got a treat. I have discovered forbidden knowledge. <laughs> oh, it looks pretty cool. So, you know, if you want to get a returnable better, just throw that out there doesn't quite fit and you do need to cut that uh, that that hole for the charge port but there's your uh, there's your USB C mod <laughs> unfortunately the retro modding one doesn't quite work because the uh, the pads are offset it works better in the thing that it's designed for. But this works in here. Like I said, obviously you need to cut the hole in the battery cover to fit the battery cover on. Otherwise the battery itself will probably fall out while you're playing with it. But there you go. I'm going to go test this out now because I'm a little bit nervous about this. I suppose I can do, I guess I'll use this on PC, I just gotta plug it in. So I'll, I'll do that, let me get the battery pack I normally use. Let's transfer over the sticker first though. I was worried about using that clear shell because it, oh for fuck's sake because uh, I was worried it would be really low quality and unfortunately I was kind of right um, but using parts I think this looks cool as hell I'm not so sure about these joysticks I'm probably gonna open it up and swap them out and. I'm especially not so sure about that crooked. If it works fine, then I'll deal with it being crooked, but my concern is that the um, it might drift. And you saw this was a new stick straight out of the box, but maybe I could just salvage that part and stick it on here and swap them out. I don't know, because this otherwise worked fine. But anyway, <gasps> is it dead? It's dead, son of a Deadly. Okay, well, I can go charge. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic night.